These are the cabinets for our entire house. Both bathrooms, the kitchen, and the laundry room. These are what's called RTA cabinets, or ready to assemble cabinets. We ordered them from thertastore.com. By ordering them this way, we saved at least 40%. By the time I install them, we will have saved even more. We worked with the RTA store and made sure everything was right with the measurements and I can't wait to get them installed. This is the digital design they gave us. My good buddy Josh from Essential Mountain Homestead had came through town and he was going to help me replace the sewer main. Shortly after we were ready to head up to the ranch and start working, my buddy Luke called me in a little bit of a situation. He had some cows he needed help separating, and he almost never asks for help. I knew if he was willing to call me in the middle of the day, he genuinely needed help. Both myself and Josh ran over there. Luke saddled his good roping horse for me, and I did everything I could to serve a purpose without doing a belly flop in the middle of the arena. What I didn't know is Josh bet Luke $5 that I'd end up with a little mud on me before the day was over. Josh lost that bet. We spent a couple of hours helping Luke get the cows separated from the calves, get them loaded up in his trailer. And truth be told, this might be my favorite kind of work. There is nothing more enjoyable to me than working hard from the back of a horse. If I could do anything with my life, I suppose that might be it. My buddy Rich the blacksmith showed up right in the middle of all this and trimmed up one of Luke's horses. Rich has been a farrier for many, many years. It was a funny deal, because I was like, you want to sell me that old anvil? And, and uh, he didn't think it was worth anything. And I told him that I would shoot his horse three times and trade for that anvil. And so I did, and the last time I went out there on the third try, the third time to shoe the horse, he had died. And I just went and did the horse anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so we were square, yeah. but yeah. He might be the most credentialed blacksmith I've ever met. That guy will forget more about blacksmithing than I'll ever know. In the middle of all this, I looked across Luke's pasture and saw that his neighbor was building a pole barn. I asked Luke if it'd be all right if I ran over and looked at it, and he said it wouldn't be a problem. I've had this idea that I might go cut and fall all the logs necessary to build my shop in a cabin style. But after looking at how Luke's neighbor built his pole barn here, I believe I've changed my mind. If I build it in this same fashion, I could fabricate my own trusses and I could probably have it done before snow flies.
Finally, myself and Josh got back up to Red Poppy Ranch and got to work. I like to think I'm pretty good in that excavator, but the difference between me and somebody that does it for a living is there is no such thing as a wasted move. As I watched Josh run my excavator, I quickly saw that I had a long ways to go. The reason we're digging up this sewer line is because by code, once I tie the shop into the sewer main, it has to be four inch. When I put this three inch sewer line in initially, it was done at a time when I wasn't required to get an inspection because technically it was an ag building. Once we turned it into a house, everything changed. The inspector never saw this, and it was cheaper for us to dig it up, change it out to four inch. And it was a good thing that we did. After Josh exposed the sewer line, I could see where the dirt had settled and where we had a couple of bellies in the sewer. I've had multiple concrete trucks drive over that sewer line and it must not have been compacted as well as I thought it was. The good news is we used the laser level, put the new 4 inch sewer line in in a way where I'll never have to worry about it again. Josh from Essential Mountain Homesteading is a tremendous resource. He has a tremendous amount of knowledge in just about everything related to construction. He's a great resource for people like me that might be building their own home or for somebody that's looking for a general contractor to run everything. Again, his YouTube channel is called Essential Mountain Homesteading. If you have a need for a consultant, regardless of where you are, look him up. He's a good dude. From the house to the septic tank is about 60 feet. We have just about exactly the perfect amount of fall. I use the laser level to ensure that we do not have any bellies in the future. Now that we've got the sewer main properly installed, we need to make sure we've got proper grade for the addition to come around and tie in without any issues. This is the last major thing keeping us from setting up a bathroom. Once the inspection is done, I will set a toilet and we will begin to make the house a home. I roughed the stub out for the addition in as shallow as I could, knowing that I had about another 60 feet to run around the house and tie into the sewer main. ABS pipe has a natural curve to it.
I've never seen a straight piece of ABS pipe. I like to use that natural curve to my advantage. If needed, I use wooden concrete stakes to straighten the pipe out a little bit. But in this application, because it has that natural curvature to it, I was able to avoid using the 22 degree fittings that I used in the 3 inch line. As you can see here at the end, the pipe is not straight, but that worked to our advantage. I've started working on the downstairs utility room. Things are moving along great. Thanks again, Josh.